Hey everyone, welcome back again. This is Craftsman Arts YouTube channel. Today is Friday. It's what I would like to call Fun Friday. We're going to be working on a piece today that I will be displaying on Sunday at our church. So get ready. I think we're going to have a fantastic time. Okay, so what I would like to go over today and for the next week, we're actually going to do a celebration of coffee. I know, I don't know if you're like me, but I love coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker, think of tea or something, your favorite drink, and just think of it like that. So, here is my fabulous cup of coffee here. This is two times the normal size. Mm, you gotta love coffee. So, our artwork today, and for the next week, we're gonna have at least different postings if it's just a, a vlog or something about coffee and you know what what do we like about coffee you know the different things the different flavors what is it that kind of just makes you fall in love with it besides just the caffeine because if you're like me you got to have that caffeine but you know we're going to go over some other stuff and hopefully have fun with this so let's celebrate coffee it's coffee week so let's get started i have chose my canvas it's an 18 by 24 canvas I am going to go with uh, some, so I was trying to think of what colors would I see in a coffee shop. You know, I wanted to kind of incorporate that into our painting that we're doing, you know, for today. So I thought I would use titanium white, burnt umber, this is, yeah, burnt sienna. And then we have my fabulous cadmium red. And we are going to use these colors to put onto our canvas. So, and this is going to be a little bit different. Um, if you watched my mixed medium uh, painting that we done, uh, I think it was about two weeks ago, this is going to kind of mimic that in a way, but not really. So I thought it would be fun to do a painting with the coffee filters again. However, we're not going to put coffee filters on it. We're going to use coffee filters as our brush right now. So I just thought it'd be kind of fun, a little twist and everything, just to kind of see how it would smooth together. So I have went ahead and put my titanium white here. Um, oh, another one is the medium gloss that I'm using. I'm just going to mix a lot of that into this because we're going to probably use a lot with each of these colors. So. Go ahead and start mixing each color onto yours. Um, I'm using an old book because I know I'm going to need a little bit wider than my normal color palette. I got all my colors mixed up, nice thick blobs. And I am going to start with the white. I'm going to put it in the middle dab it around with my coffee filter which I have crumbled up and I want that texture that's going to go on here. We're going to smooth it out a little bit later so don't worry about the exact like consistency and everything as long as it's on your canvas. We're going to start with the white, go into the cadmium red, then we're going to go into the, I think it's the burnt sienna and then the burnt umber. So here we go. You want to get this just a little wet, not too much. We don't want to lose that nice form that we have with it so you still want it wet like I have it but you don't want it where it's flat so you're just going to just dab into it start in the middle and just work your way out go into my red One reason why I added that medium into it is because I want this to stay wet as long as possible. Because we're going to go back over and smooth it with our mop brush. If you don't have one, you could probably use a flat. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult, but you could do it. I'm not saying that you can't. If your coffee filters start to get a little 
unravel just kind of how this one is starting to just get another one wrinkle it up and start over again with it it's not going to affect it in fact i might just have to do that here in just a moment i'm adding a lot of this burnt sienna and burnt umber just because coffee has that natural brown tint to it i don't want to keep that in the painting i don't want to lose that now, of course, when we're mixing the red into it, that's fine. I mean, I'm not going to get all upset over that. I feel like my white and red is starting to dry some, so I am going to just take another filter, crumple it up, and just start going over it again real quick. We want to work fast. We do not want this to dry. Otherwise, it's not going to blend here in just a moment when we're going, when we're trying to blend it. Okay, take your mop brush and just start blending these wonderful colors together here before it gets too dry and we lose it all. Just do little circles, just blend it in good here. Gotta work quick. We're gonna put some more of our burnt sienna on here. Let's see, I might just get a separate one for just it. Jump up another one. Go to town.
And if your mop brush is getting too loaded with paint, you're going to have to rinse it out and try to dry it quickly. Uh, suggestion is to get two mop brushes if you know that you're doing a project that's going to take a little bit of time with one. So then it doesn't cause that to happen to you. While that is still wet, it's starting to dry some because it's starting to stick to my mop brush a little bit more. I feel like I need to add some yellow into this. So I am going to grab my cadmium yellow and start putting on the outside and make this a little lighter. This is one of those projects that you can't think too much. You gotta just apply. Do it quickly. Don't think about it too much because if you do, you're going to let it dry too fast and you're gonna lose the way the art, the canvas and the paint and everything is developing. really liking that yellow liking how it's brightened that up so I'm going to apply more of the yellow instead of going back and doing brown and white or the sienna and white I'm actually just going to apply yellow a little bit everywhere now I like how it's brightening that I like how it's working and flowing and blending Make sure you're not pulling too much of this undercoat that we've done into this because you'll start stripping the color. You want to be very light with this. I'm barely putting any pressure on this. My gloss medium, I can definitely see it working in this. I can see it pulling it and that's fine. That's what I'm wanting to do. But you don't want to pull too much because you will strip the undercoat with it.
felt like I needed a little bit more in that center. I was losing that. So, time just to go back in it again. Okay, so I, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna start with my saucer. I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna just do just the basic outline, under coating of just the plate and the cup. Here it is, I want my saucer right here and I want my cup coming up here. So I'm gonna start with my saucer and I'm just going to And I've switched to my angle brush here. Uh, it's a 14 angle. Because it's going to help me make those oval like designs on here. I'm going to make mine just a little bit bigger. Keep in mind whenever you are painting, the, how big your canvas and everything is, you want to make sure that your objects in the canvas is appropriately sized. So this one I feel that needs to be a little bit bigger because I want to put a big cup here. So the saucer is going to have to be bigger than this.
Okay. I'm going ahead and grab my neutral gray. It's neutral gray value five. It's the gray I usually go with. And I'm just going to mix that a little bit with my titanium white just to help give it sort of a, a shade and outline kind of part to it so that I know where everything is and how's it going and make sure that the size is appropriately. Pulled that gray a little bit too far over here. It actually went out of the, the outline that I had for the cup, so I'm just gonna go and kind of blend that in a little bit better with the white. Plus, I've decided that I want the light source coming down this way, so I want it thicker and like darker on the side anyway, so. A little bit of gray into this this cup here just to give it more of a older kind of stained it's not like a pure white but it's not like a dark it's been washed it's been used part to this cup here add a little bit of personality to it you know is this cup new? If it's new, hey, go with the solid white, you know. The customer just got it, it's no big deal. Mine, mine has been used a little bit. I wanted to have kind of a older, almost like an antique kind of design. And I wanna add texture on here. My strokes aren't completely straight. I'm loading this up. adding like little lines and stuff with this and that's fine you know if you want to you can add like maybe a little crack in it take your small round brush or a really small fine detail one and make a little crack if you want that's all fine you know however you want to do it it's your piece and you can design it the way that you want it to be designed so I'm gonna pull some of this gray into this, onto the top, because I'm gonna make a little rim going around it to give it more of a, a depth and a 3D kind of look to this. And of course, it's gonna be a little bit darker because the light source is here, so it's gonna have like a shadowing to it. So I'm adding some of my gray into this.
You can make this as thick as you want. Just keep in mind, you know, it's going to get thinner with that light source into the gray where the coffee is. So keep that in mind, okay? I don't want you to feel like your shading's wrong or the rim's not right. And that's because remember, it's it really thin. And of course, now it doesn't have to be perfect. If you feel like more shading needs to be done, add more gray to it. If you feel like the gray or the white is too much, put the gray on top of it. I mean, maybe the shading's too much. You think that it shouldn't be that thick. If you need to go grab a coffee cup <laughs> that you want to put on here, go get it. Use it as your demonstration, as your model. Okay, that wraps up part one of our part two of this. Uh, as you can see, there's going to be a lot more detail. We're going to add some whipped cream and some other stuff that you can put onto coffee in the next video. So if this is something that you're interested in and want to, definitely make sure you check back tomorrow when we release part two of this. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments. And we'll see you soon. Get out there and create.